Hello and welcome to Celebrant Training Scotland. I'm Lindy, I'm the founder and the lead tutor here in the training. And if you're watching this wee video, then I'm assuming that you are perhaps interested in the funeral celebrant training that's coming up in January 2021. And if you are, hopefully this video will give you a bit more information about what to expect uh, and how the course uh, is going to unfold. So it's a four day course and it's run over two weekends in January. The correct dates are, because if you've been getting my mail shots, you'll know I put the wrong dates in the first video. So the correct dates are the 9th and 10th of January and then the 30th. 30th and 31st of January, so 9th and 10th and 30th and 31st of January. And we'll talk about those four days uh, and what they entail in a moment, but this course is going to be a wee bit different from previous courses in that there will also be a session beforehand, probably a two-hour Zoom session beforehand, where students will begin to learn about and write a full funeral service. And the idea behind that is so that by the time the training starts on the 9th of January you already have a full funeral service written. Now you probably tweak it as you go which is fine but you'll have a fully prepared funeral service and that's what you're going to deliver on the final day of the training and that'll cut down in homework for you or it'll certainly give you more time to to work with it and and that means that the four days uh, and the training can be given over to uh, looking at the practical aspects and the logistical elements of being a funeral celebrant, as well as, as the theory, of course. And there's loads of practice over the four days. So almost straight away when you come into the training space, you will be asked to get up and speak. So you'll be presenting poems and readings, as, you know, as well as parts of your service and other pieces of literature. And we are going to have guest tutors who will lead you through storytelling, will lead you through vocal warming up, warm, warm up exercises to get you all ready. And, uh, and these are tools that you can use as you go forward uh, in your celebrancy work just to make sure that you are always, you know, always bringing yourself to it in the best way possible. The course is run online using the video platform Zoom, and so you would need to have Zoom downloaded and ideally know how to switch on your microphone and your camera. But we do have at least one, maybe even two wee practice sessions beforehand, before the four days, just so where we can do that and get to know each other. We get, become familiar with the training space and you can get to work out how your camera and your microphone works. But I should say that for some people sitting in front of their computer screen for long periods of time is really, really challenging. So if you think that's it's going to be you, that's maybe a consideration before you book or, or you, you find out more about the course. In order to gain a certificate of completion, all students are expected to attend all the sessions and to take part in all the exercises and submit all the, the homework in the time scale that they are given. And at the end of the four days, if I think there might be extra work needed before you go out and market yourself as a funeral celebrant, I will let you know that. But I'll also try and point you in the right direction uh, for further help and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But one of the questions that comes up repeatedly is that this question of if you enrol in the course, uh, if, or if you want to enrol in the course, but you don't have any experience in public speaking, is that okay? Can you can you still sign up? And the clear answer to that is no. And I've changed the whole application process to make sure that we are addressing that. Uh, and and I make no apologies for the fact that I don't let people you know, on that have absolutely no public speaking experience because, as I keep saying, somebody's funeral service cannot be your training ground to become a confident public speaker. It just can't. And I think everybody would recognise that that's a fair point. You need to try and develop these skills, or at least start developing these skills before you even think about becoming on the training. So um, so please don't uh, tr even try and enrol in this course if you're somebody that's never had any public experience, uh, public speaking experience, or you're terrified of speaking in public. Nervous is different, nervous, a wee bit nervous, but um, 
but not completely inexperienced and terrified. So what happens in the four days? Well, actually, before the four days even starts, as soon as you sign up to the course, you're given access to uh, five hours or over five hours of pre-course materials. So that's videos, lectures, sample services, you know, uh, live webcasts of me giving services. So there's lots and lots of there to get your teeth into before this, uh, the course even begins. And as I said, we'll have a pre-course session where you'll begin writing a full funeral service. And then on the actual course, we start off by looking at funeral celebrancy in Scotland. We look at all the different types of celebrants that are out there. We look at the different types of funeral services that you might be asked to do. We look at different venues that you might be asked to conduct a service in. We look at using technology at services because that's always a biggie. We look at the structure of funeral services. Uh, we spend a lot of time looking at the family visit and quest how we, uh, the questions we ask and uh, you know how to listen properly. We look at difficult and challenging services, so baby services, young people, people have taken their own life. And we look at running uh, a celebrant business. So it's a full-on packed curriculum. And there are also lots of what I call what ifs, which is where as we go through the, the training, students get ch chances to say, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? And then on the last day, you will deliver your full 20 minute funeral service in front of your peers, other celebrants, and maybe even a funeral director. All done virtually, of course, but still. And the, the, the virtual training has proven to be really, really uh, great and much more successful than I ever thought it would be. And then after the course, you have a one-to-one -one session with me where I'll give you feedback of your, you know, your work over the, the, the course and your final delivery, your final presentation. You can bring any uh, questions, any lingering questions or issues that you might have. And you will either be given the, the sort of stamp to, of support to go ahead and um, get out there and, and start working as a funeral celebrant or I may ask you to redo some of your work, resubmit some of your work and to re-deliver your presentation. And if I feel that you're absolutely not ready to go out and hold services for people, I will let you know that. I can't stop you from going out because the industry is not regulated, but I can and I will and I have had to say to people that I'm sorry I can't support you going forward. But even at that, I'll do my best to try and help you find and create an action plan to, to help you to move forward. And then once everybody has had their feedback, We'll have a short closing session and um, and then we have a virtual welcome ceremony where all the previous Celebrant Training Scotland students are invited to join in with a wee beverage of their, their choice just to say hello and welcome you to the CTS family, to our wee tribe. So if you're if after all that, <laughs> if after all that you're still listening and you're still interested, why should you consider training with uh, celebrant Training in Scotland or with me. Well, the truth is you should train with whatever organisation that you think is going to offer you whatever it is you're looking for in terms of celebrant training and certainly is going to offer you good value for money. But I think there's certainly a few considerations and reasons why I think celebrant Training in Scotland is worth considering. Firstly, I have a background, a long background in training and development. So this is really natural to me, you know, being in the training space, writing training programs, that's all very natural to me. And I'm always looking for ways that I can improve the, the learner experience. And that comes via feedback from students about how we can improve the course for future students. Secondly, Celebrant Training Scotland is much more of a family or if you don't like the word family much more of a tribe than just an organization and that once you become a graduate we don't just go should by now and you're off out there on your own in this what can be very very solitary work we have built this really great community of support 
where not only do we have regular catch-ups, but we have regular CPD sessions, we have book clubs, we have, we sh you know, we've built this real ethos of sharing best practice. So you can come on and ask questions, you can come on with things you're challenged by or things you don't know about, and it will always be a supportive, a supportive response to that. Thirdly, this is not an easy course. You know, it's not a case of paying your money, uh, your course fee, and, and getting a definite thumbs up from me. The course is a lot of work, and that's one thing that the students come back and say, my goodness, it's a lot of work, and I didn't realise that this role was so demanding. And um, and it is, and I demand a lot from my students, but, but only because I know it will make you a better celebrant at the end of the day. So when you go out from this course and you're ready to go out and do this work, you know that you've earned that certificate and that letter of training that, that I um, give you. But I suppose more than anything, more than any of that, it's because I'm not just a trainer, I'm also a full-time celebrant. You know, I have seven funeral services this week. So I'm always out and about and doing the work and, and keeping up to date with new developments and things that are changing in the industry, especially around about these difficult times of COVID. But the other thing is I've only been a celebrant for four years. So I didn't get into this work 20 years ago when there were hardly any celebrants and it was much easier to get work. I came into this when there were already loads of celebrants and loads of well-established celebrants in my area and I still managed to become a really successful celebrant. So I suppose more than anything, I bring my ongoing experience into the training space. And I continue to share that with you through live videos, recorded videos, and much, much more. Almost every time I'm out at a service, I'm making a wee video that goes on our private uh, CTS Facebook page, just with any learnings that have come up from that. So if after all that, you would still like to find out a bit more about becoming a funeral celebrant with CTS, then um, either email me at hello at celebranttraininscotland.co.uk and I will send you an inquiry form. You can tell us a bit about you. Or if you're in the right platform, because this video is going in different places, click the link below and you, that application form will come up and you can submit it. And, um, and I will come back to you as soon as I possibly can. Right, I hope that's been helpful. That's two, day, two times in two days I've made this video because I, I uh, initially recorded it with the wrong dates. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope if you are considering becoming a celebrant, then you will consider Celebrant Training Scotland because we're a great wee group. And we very much believe in developing the individual and allowing that person to move at their own pace but fully supported by us here in the background so I hope that's been helpful and I hope that I might get to speak to you soon okay fearful